hello everyone so today we will discuss the kadappa basin pichle lecture mein humne vindhyan basin complete kiya tha which was our lecture 6 इस लेक्चर में वी विल कंप्लीट लेक्चर ऑन कडप्पा बेसिन सो विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द कडप्पा बेसिन दिस विल बी चैप्टर सेवन ऑफ द प्रोटेरोजोइक बेसिन सो अभी हम प्रोटेरोजोइक बेसिन ऑफ इंडिया डिस्कस कर रहे हैं एंड दिस इज चैप्टर सेवन of upsc gsi mains so kadappa basin jo hai wo southern part of the india mein hai it is a crescent shape basin okay crescent shape means iska shape is something like this okay it's a crescent shape basin and it is 440 km long means this one it is 440 km and 145 km width so this is 145 km is the width now proterozoic basin resting on the basement of archean so this is a proterozoic basin and its basement is of archean gneiss and granulites the important part of this kadappa basin is here un eparchean unconformity is present so eparchean inform uh, Eparchean unconformity is a unconformity which separates Archean and Proterozoic. So this is very very important. This separation, this unconformity actually is uh, this uh, separation is made based on a very important fossil uh, which was a soft-bodied fossil at that time known as Edicaran bacteria. okay now the sep it separates the proterozoic sediment of kadappa from archean basement now if we discuss about the structure so the structure is arcuate it is not plunging low amplitude asymmetrical synclinorium so it is talking about this structure only which is this one something like this now the eastern flank is intensely deformed means it is talking about this part east part of this kadappa basin it is in um, intense intensely deformed due to the presence of eastern ghat mobile belt and western flank has a little disturbance means this one so because of the presence of egmb uh, in the eastern part of this kadappa basin there is a lot of uh, deformation and on the another hand the western flank has little disturbance now velikonda thrust is present in the eastern margin now if we see the tectonic stratigraphy so here this figure represent tectonic stratigraphy of kadappa basin now if we see this one so we can see here this is papagani and chitravati group this one is kurnool group here is the sri salam formation now here this is important here here you can see this part marchu kuru thrust okay this one is marchu kuru thrust here is the nallamalai formation and here is the velikonda thrust okay and here you can see ongol domain and here is krishna origin and this one is kurnool formation which is a part of new york uh, kadappa group because this one is older one papagani chitravanti these are older and kunul and sri salam the newer one in the stratigraphic sequence so if we discuss how the kadappa basin is separated it is separated on the basis of younger kunul group and older kunul super group now simple stratigraphy if we discuss it is papagani chitravanti nallamalai and sri salam which is also known as krishna group now this is again the important part of this lecture that is stratigraphy of kadappa basin so if we talk about the basement so here basement is dharwar gneiss and granite dharwar gneiss and granite is the basement which is of archean age and this unconformity here 
is a power canon conformity. Now above this is uh, is Papagani group and important part in Papagani group is this one Gulcheru formation which is this part because this Gulcheru formation and this Dharwar knees and this granite here this separation this the presence of unconformity between this is a Iparkian unconformity so this is Indian example of this one now in Papagani group two formations are there Gulcheru formation which is mainly quartzite above that Vempelle formation is there in this Vempelle formation we have Ullam pet formation which is famous for barite okay now the main uh, composition lithology of this Vempelle formation is shale and limestone so this uh, is a part of Kadapa super group so Papagani group Chitravati group Nalamalai group and Krishna group all comes under Kadapa super group all comes under Kadapa super group now if we talk about the Chitravati group it includes Pulvindu formation Tarpatri formation and Gandhikota formation and all of those are basically siliceous chart and jasper so the lithology of this one is siliceous chart and jasper now above that is a nallamalai group it include barraconda formation and kambam or plumpet formation oh i have written plumpet here really sorry so in here the plumpet formation is there this one in Kambam this plumpet and this is famous for barite so this is very important this formation is famous for barite deposit it is a part of Nallamalai group which include Baran Kunda formation and Kambam formation which is also known as plumpet formation above that is a Kurnul group which contain a conglomerate in the base then limestone shale quartzite limestone shale and unconformity is present in this part here unconformity is present here also unconformity is present here also unconformity is here and unconformity is separating the kurnul group from kadappa super group also so this is the entire stratigraphy along with the lithology of kadappa basin now if we talk about much more detail about it so each unit start with quartzite and end with dolomite and limestone and shale alteration in this so if we see here gulcheru formation was a quartzite here and it ended with shale and limestone similarly here you see pulvindu formation it also contain quartzite and it end with uh, Gandhikota formation which is basically limestone and shale same thing is repeating here in this part also in uh, Barankonda formation and one more very important thing this um, this Nallamalai group has a very economic significance because of the presence of lead and copper now uh, the depositional environment of this is the sediments are deposited in the shallow marine shallow marine environment along the shore and shell later deepening eastward okay so the most of the deposit here are shallow marine and the depth of the basin increases eastward so as the depth of the basin is increasing eastward the paleocurrent direction is also northeastly so paleocurrent direction is northeastly now the source rock for uh, the Kadapa basin is your basically knees and granite of Dharwar. So provenance means source rock. Now we can see different uh, different igneous activities also here, like Kupala Pali volcanics in the upper part of Papagani formation. 
seven lava flows are associated with agglomerates and tuff in the kambam formation of nallamalai thin sedimentary tuffs are deposited so these are the different igneous activities which have been identified in your uh, kadappa basin now kadappa basin is very very important for its barite deposit and 90% of the india and 25% of the world deposit of granular and rosate which is a type of uh, your barite is largely confined to vempelle belt and mostly in vein type deposit and one more important thing here is your nallamalai group ulampet formation is also important for barite deposit and this is important because this year in 2023 one question was asked based on this now in agni gundala we get copper and building stones now if we talk about the evolution okay so uh, this rift first initially the rift was developed when india was part of rodinia so when india was uh, trying to separate from rodinia different rifts were created same like vindhyan rift was created similarly kadappa rift uh, uh, near the kadappa rift were created where later the the uh, the provenance was dharwar and from there the sediments get eroded and deposited in the kadappa basin so the kadappa basin is believed to have formed in one of those rift valley the basin is bounded by western and eastern ghat fault which are still active today so we, we have seen the tectono stratigraphy of this kadappa basin it is bounded by the different faults on western and eastern side of this kadappa basin early sediments were mostly of the volcanic origin now if we talk about the evolution of papagani group which is uh, which is the oldest part of the kadappa basin during the formation of rift volcanic activity started and mountains were created which after erosion got deposited in the basin formed the papagani group so in the papagani group two major formation was there gulcheru and vempelle formation now nallamalai formation as india was moving away rift was getting widened and shallower so initially that rift was created that rift was getting wider with the passage of time and it is getting shallower this lead to the deposition of nallamalai group which is mostly shallow marine and deltaic so nallamalai group is mostly shallow marine and deltaic and papagani group is mostly of the volcanic origin volcanic origin now if we talk about the kurnool group during the later stage of basin evolution there was a lot of sea level fluctuation therefore you can see the difference period of transgression regression which leads to a deposit of shale sandstone and limestone it is the thickest okay it is the thickest and most widely distributed group of the kadappa basin so it is kurnool group is the thickest among the other groups in the kadappa basin now the tectonic evolution of the basin uh, was also influenced by intrusion of large igneous bodies such as silicium and nallamalai plutons so this was uh, igneous activity uh, means in the form of silts and dikes which contributed to the deformation and uplift of the basin so this is the overall tectonic evolution of the kadappa basin so this completes our lecture on the kadappa basin so this was lecture number 7 in the next lecture we will start with the gondwana super group so thank you very much for watching this video